Okay, so we're going to be diving back into Capture One today. In particular, I'm going to be looking at how we work with layers inside our editing workflow using the program. When you are editing an image, there are two types of editing that you're likely to do to your photograph. The first is global, meaning that it's going to affect the entire image. So you're looking at things like your black point, your white point, the curve or the co contrast that you're going to be adding to it, color levels, etc., etc. The second type of editing is localized editing or local editing. And this is where we identify a small portion of the image and we only work on the tones or the color in that particular area of the photograph. So first off, let's describe what layers are. One of the easiest ways to describe layers is with a pack of playing cards. Basically, if I have a card and I stack another card on top of it, you can't see the base card unless you cut a hole inside the card that is on top. That means that you can see through to the layer below. This is where masks come into play. In Photoshop, on the right-hand side of your panel, next to each layer, you have a mask. The mask is basically showing where you cut through to the layer below it. Prior to raw editing having layers and masks, the basic idea was that you would go into something like Photoshop and you would create layers and make your adjustments on each of those layers to the image. Using layers allows for non-destructive editing of a photograph because if you make a mistake, all you do is really remove that layer as opposed to having to undo, 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 all the way back to a stage where you had made that particular edit. An adjustment layer is one where you make a full adjustment and you apply it to a separate layer. So let's say we take a curves control and we add contrast to a new adjustment layer. It means that if I want to localize where that contrast curve has been applied, I can erase part of that mask or I can actually use a tool just to apply that particular contrast curve to a certain section of the image. The Adobe method using Photoshop is simply that you would make your adjustment layer above your base layer and then you apply that using a mask and this is where we get the name masks from and you'll also see this applied through to uh, programs like for instance Lightroom where rather than having layers we just have masks and every single mask has an adjustment attached to it. We no longer need layers for non-destructive editing because raw photographs by their very nature cannot be edited destructively. We can use layers to be able to more effectively edit our photographs in the raw editors like Capture One Pro. Now there's massive advantages to being able to layer your adjustments. Not only can you just remove an adjustment if you don't want to use it anymore, you can localize it and you can also change how much of an effect that adjustment is going to have by changing, for instance, the opacity of that particular layer. Most importantly though, by layering we have that much more control over the selections that we make in terms of where we want to have a effect or a color or a contrast applied to within the image. Now the advantage of using Capture One Pro is that the terminology and as well the workflow is somewhat more akin to Photoshop than using for instance Lightroom because you now have layers and inside those layers which can apply a whole range of adjustments you can then make selections so that you can apply those adjustments to a particular portion of the image. This video is going to be specifically an overview of how we use layers inside Capture One. I will go through each of these independently in individual videos to, in the future which I'll add into the information block below as and when they are made. If there's nothing there at the moment it's simply because those videos haven't been made yet. So remember to subscribe so that you can actually see when I do update and add more of these videos around how we use each of the individual tools in layers in Capture One. First off, as we dive into Capture One, I need to stress the importance of learning how to use keyboard shortcuts. I create my keyboard workshops by taking my cursor, moving up to the edit at the top, and then looking down and finding edit keyboard shortcuts. And then you'll have several options available to you. By adding keyboard shortcuts, you can greatly speed up the way that you work through your images and it becomes second nature, even if you just learn one keyboard shortcut every single time you open up your program. So what I've done is I have tried to align as much as possible to Photoshop, because I also use Photoshop a lot, some of my controls. For instance, if I want to create a new layer, I now have that as Alt Command N. The baseline command shift command N is create new catalog in Capture One. So I can't use that like I would in Photoshop. So instead I've said alt command N for create new empty layer. 
you'll see that this creates a new layer above that says adjustment layer one. You can double click the text inside there and you can actually rename that if you want to. For instance, if I'm going to be working just on my curves, I can say uh, double click curves and then I will work on that particular layer. And it's going to affect all the layers below it. The one downside to Capture One, I suppose, is that we haven't actually gotten to blend modes between our layers yet, but who knows, maybe that'll happen in the future. So if I have an empty layer, I obviously need to make a selection inside there or a mask inside that to be able to uh, make my adjustments. To create a new layer that has a full mask, so in other words, anything that you do is going to automatically be applied to that whole layer, I have created the shortcut key Shift Alt Command E. Photoshop users will recognize this as the claw so because it's such an awkward position, but that creates a new layer as a, co a new copied layer of all the layers below it in Photoshop. I thought that was the most similar control to creating a new layer with a full mask attached. If you create that as a new layer, anything that you do now to your adjustments are going to be applied to that layer and hence to the layers below that inside your layer stack. Right, so that's how we create our new layers and you can delete them simply by clicking, highlighting the layer and hitting your backspace button and voila, they disappear. So you can also go through your layers up and down. Um, if you don't like one, you can delete it. You can switch off the eye for instance by just clicking on the actual tick button. So if you've got an adjustment that you don't feel is necessary to the image, you can check to see whether it has any effect or if it is too strong or if you don't like it at all. Here's another tip as well though. If the layer is too strong or the effect is too strong, you can dial it back by changing the opacity on that layer and it'll apply to the layer, the layer that you have highlighted. Okay, so that's the basics of how we create our layers. Now, how can we create our selections? Let's assume you've created a new layer and it doesn't have a mask inside it. If you make any adjustments, you're not gonna see those changes to the image yet. You first have to draw a mask where it's actually going to be applied. And you've got several tools at your disposal to be able to do this. And you can see them from left to right. You've got your brush, your magic brush, your gradient tool, your radial tool. Then in the next section, you've got your healing brush, clone stamp, and in the last section on the right hand side you have your eraser followed by your magic eraser. Once more I've gone into my keyboard shortcuts and I've created a series of keyboard shortcuts that I think work for me. So for instance brush I've set to B, so again it aligns with Photoshop. If I hit B I'm going to now be presented with a small circle with a second circle around it and that is basically my brush and I can feather my brush using the outside circle. You can use the keys square bracket closed and open to be able to make your brush smaller or bigger and you can also right click on your stage to change its opacity or to change its feathering. Feathering can also be changed just by holding down your shift button and using your square brackets at the same time as well. Once more, I will go into more depth in a separate video about how to use the brush most effectively. Once you start brushing onto your mask itself, you will see that your adjustments will start to take place inside your image. If you haven't made any adjustments, you're creating a mask so that any future adjustments on that particular layer are going to come through to the image itself. If you want to see where your mask is, you can actually say visualize mask by hitting the keyboard shortcut M, which is the, uh, the default shortcut, or above your stage on the top left hand corner, you'll see that you've got a little icon with an eye inside it. You can click on that and you can choose to always see your mask. And then suddenly you will have a nice red image showing where your mask is applied. So anywhere where you see the color red, it is going to be affected by your adjustments. Anywhere where it is clear, it is not going to be affected by your adjustments. So that's how the brush tool works. And if you want to erase from your brush tool, you can use your shortcut key E, or you can click on the erase button on the right hand side underneath your layer stack. The most used mask is probably your gradient tool. I've set that to shortcut key G again, so that it aligns with Photoshop as opposed to something like Lightroom. And when I hit G, it means that I get a little icon, which I can click and drag to create the gradient inside my image where I'm going to have a uh, mask attached above and below that is gonna be clear. You will see the lines whenever you are on the gradient tool. So you can actually make those lines come together to make your gradient 
harder or you can pull them apart to make them softer. You can also change the angle of your gradient by grabbing the center line and rotating to clockwise or counterclockwise and you can grab anywhere on your gradient and drag it around the image itself. The idea being here that you can create a very big block of adjustment. The most likely usage for instance is adjusting your sky, making it potentially darker or bringing back your highlights but so that it only affects the sky and not other portions of the image. Similarly aligned to the gradient tool is the radial tool. Now the radial tool creates a ellipsis uh, as its mask itself. So once you choose it, and I've chosen shortcut key T as my shortcut to be able to access this tool. So you will click and you will drag and it'll create a ellipsis shape inside your image. If you hold down shift at the same time, you will get a perfect circle. You can make your ellipsis longer or fatter or wider using any of the drag points, which are the small little dots on the corners. You can change the feathering of your radial mask by taking that outside line and dragging it outwards or inwards. And of course you can move the radial tool around the image itself. On drawing your mask, if you have your mask visualized, which you can access by hitting the M button, if you have your mask visualized, you'll notice that you either have a red circle or there is a clear circle with a red surround. The red is the indication of where the mask is applied. You can change whether you draw the mask inside or outside the radial tool by right clicking on the stage and selecting the little tick button. However, there's also another quick way to be able to invert your mask. I've created the shortcut key shift command I to invert any mask. So if I do a radial filter and I find that it is the outside surround rather than the inside the circle, I just need to hit shift command I and it turns it around so that the, the mask is inverted. And of course this can apply to any mask that you create. So if you have your gradient filter and it is in the wrong side or the wrong uh, orientation, just hit shift command I, once more you can invert that mask itself. Then we come to the rather more interesting tools that are available for creating our selections in Capture One, and these all employ a little bit of AI magic in the background. First off, there is the magic brush, which to all intents and purposes is very similar to Photoshop's magic wand. Essentially what we do is we use a brush tool to select a certain area and then Capture One uses its little AI brain to calculate which is the most likely area around that based on detail, hue and luminosity to create an accurate automatic mask of that area. And it is quite shockingly good to be honest. I've chosen the shortcut key W because it is so similar to the magic wand tool in uh, Photoshop. So if I hit W, I go straight into my magic brush. So you can see my shortcut keys are B for brush, W for magic brush. If I draw my little magic brush over a portion of somebody's face, it's going to identify all of the similar tones, details, and luminosity to, to select the rest of the face. And it does this in an incredibly accurate way. Sometimes almost too accurate, to the point that if you make any adjustments, you can actually see where the mask is because it's just not natural that it can be that much more different to the outer line areas. And it's for this reason that we're gonna to have to be able to refine our masks, which I'll get to in a little bit. Along with the magic brush, we also have the magic eraser, which is on the right of your layers palette next to the eraser tool. If erase tool was shortcut key E, you just hit shift E and you'll go into magic eraser. Now magic eraser does the same thing as the magic brush. What it does is you're going to draw a little area that you want to erase and it automatically tries to create a selection based on luminosity, detail, hue to be able to make that same kind of mask but now as an erasing mask. To be honest, I tend to avoid the magic eraser. I far prefer using the magic brush, refining, and then using just a standard eraser that's nicely feathered or changed with the opacity to be able to pull back on edges or to remove an area. In the latest iterations of Capture One, their AI algorithms in the background are shockingly good to the point that they've now added two little buttons, select subject and select background. Now, these two little magic buttons identify everything inside the image and try to work out what could be the potential subject or what could be the potential background. You hit the button and what it does is it identifies that and creates a mask around that and voila, suddenly your subject is selected. 
Once more, the selection is so good that if you do a fairly extreme adjustment, it's going to show that it is an edited local area inside the photograph, which is why we have to do the refining of our masks. We also don't want to forget the AI mask. Now this is a brand new feature from Capture One, which is pretty incredible. Basically what it does is it prepares a AI mask over the entire image. Then you use the cursor to select an area and it practically magically selects just the object that it's hovering over. It is uncanny the ability for the AI mask to be able to select objects. But once again, the selection is so accurate that you might need to refine the mask at a later stage. The AI eraser works in a similar fashion, selecting magically an area and removing that from your created mask. The features of the AI mask are so impressive that they actually justify having their own video all on its own. So I'm just going to gloss over it in this particular instance. Suffice to know that it's there and it's impressive. Cool, so that's the basis of how we create our layers and create masks or selections inside the layers to be able to make our adjustment. But wait, there's more, as they say. You can also refine those masks, and this is the major advantage of working in Capture One in its layers-based approach. If you jump across to your layers palette on the left-hand side, you will see a little menu icon across from every single layer. If you right click on that, you have a whole bunch of options and the most important ones here are going to be Feather, Rasterize and Refine Mask. If you Feather, obviously all it's doing is it's taking your mask and it's creating a feathered outline around it. So you are blending your adjustment into the area around that. So that's the most basic way to be able to refine your mask. However, Capture One also has their Refine Mask, which is pretty important. What this does is it bases the feathering so that it also looks at the edge detail and what the subject is away from your background. It'll consider things like the hue, the sharpness, and the luminosity of the area around it so that it blends your adjustment more accurately into the surrounding pixels. You also have the option to select which luminosity values the mask is going to actually effect. For instance, we can create a radial tool, but if we only want the shadows to be affected, you can create your radial tool, then hit Luma Mask in your layers palette, then change it so that only the shadows of that particular mask are being affected by the adjustments that you're going to apply. So as you can see, there are a huge number of ways that you can make your selections and refine your selections to get very accurate and very natural looking adjustments just to localized areas of the image itself. As I mentioned right at the beginning, this is just an overview of the layered approach to being able to work in Capture One. I will go into each of these tools and into creating the layers in more detail, tool by tool, in a series of upcoming videos, which as I mentioned, I will add into the info block as and when they are made. Let's say you understand the concept of the layered approach to editing and you are comfortable with making your adjustments on new layers, but you've gone and made all of your adjustments on your initial base image. Well, Capture One's got your back there as well, because if this is the case, you've made your adjustments and you've forgotten to put them on a new layer, all you need to do is go up to the layer icon or the create new layer, the little plus sign, hit that and at the bottom of the drop down menu, you're going to see add image adjustments to new layer. So regardless of how many adjustments you've got on your base layer, it's going to take all of those, put them into a new layer and revert your base layer back to its starting condition which is a fantastic way to be able to get into the layered approach, even on images that you've worked on in the past, which you've simply done everything on a individual base layer. If you have any questions or something that you feel that I haven't covered in full, pop it into the comments block below, and I will address it when I start dealing with the sort of blow by blow accounts of how we use each tool in the upcoming videos in future. Until then, I hope you enjoy exploring and using Capture One. Cheers.